the tonight. We left off last week talking about the cashless um, environment, whatever. So we're getting, moving here. So the IRS would love to see a cashless society. Be great for them. Their goal would be cashless, and why would that be? You know, there's a lot of paperwork involved and a lot of responsibility there. And if it turns electronic, a lot of the information is already taken care of electronically. You, know, you have the software and all sorts of things is already in the system. <laughs> but with banking, you know, got deposits, you've got W-2s and so forth and all sorts of forms that, you know, is related to cash and everything. So the cashless society would reduce a lot of the paperwork. You know, they would, they would enjoy that. You know, it's very costly, so reduce cost. So within the next five years, nearly 75% of all people will no longer file a tax return. So if the government has all the records of everything you do, it will withdraw taxes from your income. If you disagree with it, you just simply file an amended return. Hold off for there a moment. So in the past, when you had a check deposited and so forth, you know, maybe you get a paycheck every two weeks, or maybe it's once a month, you'd open up your payroll, and you'd run down to the bank, and you'd fill out your deposit, and get that gone. And anymore, it's, it's already deposited for you electronically. There's a lot of lines that's not, you know, congested anymore because they're not running to the bank to make the deposit. You know, the system is taking care of it for you. So, you know, it's just all dependent, you know, do you owe anything? Are you going to get something back? And it's just, it's coming to be cashless. Now this picture here is just basically they're after you. You know, you gotta pay your taxes, you're not gonna run away from it. And they've got you, you know. They're like, you can't run away with the money, you gotta pay up. So here's another thing, the IRS knows that the revenues would skyrocket and they'd be able to eliminate tax evasion. There's a lot of problems still, you know, in regards to taxes and, you know, people want to try to avoid paying taxes. Credit card, it's like, whoa. There's always a way, people are going to try to find a way to avoid paying taxes. The IRS wants people to, you know, pay up. So here's the question. Will we have a cashless society very soon? And yes, it's coming. It's very close. So you know you have Social Security. You have to have a social security number to be able to work. If you don't have a social security number, you're not allowed to work. You have to have a social security number. You know, no social security job and no job. In the past, it wasn't that way. You know, uh, was it 1930s or somewhere in there? They started the social security number and. Um, oh, oh, that took 
And then they started to be able to control your income. You know, pay, pay towards taxes, of course, Social Security and so forth. And so time has moved on, and you know, it's, <coughs> it's headed towards a cashless society. That's, that's the bottom line. So again, repeating, everyone in the United States is required to have a Social Security number. And it is illegal to hold a job in the U.S. without a Social Security number. So people try to work without, you know, having identification with their social security number. And, you know, the hot topic now is, the, is ICE trying to escort illegal, illegals out of the country. And that's the hot topic. Because they work in our country and they don't pay taxes. Once they're caught, then they're, the, the, the goal would be from ICE to remove them, take, you know, take them back to their origination country. All right. So moving along, once we have a cashless society, it's required a person to have a bank account. If you don't have one, they'll, they'll, you've got to open up an account. So this is how you're going to get paid if you have a job. It's a way of controlling, you know, individuals. So it all, it all began in Florida. All employees of that state must accept direct deposit of their checks. This was in 1996. Mm -hmm. remember I was in college and I still had a check and then 97 I had a check and sometime after that two or three years later it started uh, with you know full auto deposit you know I'd have to present my bank account number which account I wanted my payroll to go into and I had to set that up numbers and so forth it did become a law back in 1996 in July and it's been happening all over the country since that time. Now, um, we're seeing experimentation with chip implants. It started with peop when people began injecting their pets or even cattle with these computer chips. It's placed under the animal skin, the chips containing vital information, and it's smaller than a grain of rice, very tiny. So, you know, it's injected underneath the skin. <coughs> now, here's some more information. Back in 1997, the Illinois Department of Public Aid it launched the nation's first retinal eye scanning project. So it's talking about the eye. And it was a, you know, be able to identify eligible welfare clients to prevent fraud. So someone would go in and present their name and so forth, they'd fill out you know, the paperwork, be approved, maybe one or two weeks later, a month or two later, so forth. It'd be the same person, but they'd have different information. You know, there would be a fraud happening. You know, they could develop two or three or four times, you know, and so forth, they'd become a different person. But it's the same human, you know, same person, but they would have a different identity, a different social security number, and so forth. You know, it's the same person coming and going, and they're, and they're creating this false identity of different individuals. And so, back in 97, this was developed, this project to help prevent fraud. And so, you know, at that time, you know, the process you know, they would stop the person and say, well, this, you know, this person's already, you know, filled this out and there's no need to complete this today. You know, so they would prevent that fraud. So it was a really bad deal. You know, another thing when they go to the doctor and and 
anyway, suggesting how, you know, fraud was just a rampage. It was just in regards to identity. And so the federal government would just be pouring out money to all these different people for different situations, circumstances, and many of them would be under false identity. So the government was like, we gotta figure out some way to stop this, to avoid all this happening. And you know, people are pocketing money for free. So in addition to commentary here, to reduce criminals from committing check fraud. I know this happened to me, you know, I'm just given a check. And like they want to cash the check. So they gave me a check and they're like, go cash it now. And I'm like, okay, so I do you have do you have an account here? And I said, no, I don't have an account here, but I need to cash this check. And so they presented to me where I had to leave my thumbprint on the back of the check. Oh, this is, you know, somewhat like two or three years ago. I didn't have an account with that specific bank, but the person that wrote me the check, that was their bank. And so I took the check there because it was their bank. And then they charged me, you know, a fee to cash the, cash the check. Because I didn't have a, you know, I didn't have an account there. But if I had an account, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't charge me, and I wouldn't have to leave a print. So this was another way to hinder, you know, fraud from happening. So you have the fingerprinting and the retinal eye scans. It's just really, in reality, it's just becoming very close to taking the mark in your hand or your forehead. It's the same concept, it's just a different manner of, of it to be placed. And it's, it's happening, it's, you know, it's happening all over, but so we know the Lord is coming very soon. Someone's talking about... People having multiple cards and so forth, like credit cards, and someone was sharing with this person that they may have to eliminate their cards down to one. And that credit card company would have their identity and you know, I and you know, with the phone with your phone, you know, it's it's gonna see your eye and it it's so forth. Yeah, and on your phone it can scan your eye. Last week you talked uh, at a deaf conference, they asked for, you know, support for, you know, to support the deaf ministry and you were able to use your phone and you just took the credit card and you touched it and it automatically input your information. So like so today, you know, churches, you know, they, they're accepting just using your phone by texting to a number and it links it to a specific uh, website or a link. And all you have to do is use your phone, take a picture of your credit card where it's got that uh, that uh, special metal piece, I can't remember what it's called, sure. the interpreter, the chip, in the, in the credit card, and it automatically inputs all the correct information. You know, it was just, instead of filling it out, it's just, wow, it was just how things have changed. Very automatic. Now people are using face identity, not necessarily the eyes, but it's identifying the face. So these features, we just know the Lord's coming. So here's a question for you. Oh. Take the mark. Take oh. the mark. No, 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 no. Everybody's saying reject it. No, I ain't taking the mark. No, thank you. Yeah, you Are you gonna accept it? You know, he's asking the class, going around the class, and everybody's like, no. We're going to take a look at Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. What does this tell us? So I've been studying chapter 14. I just want to share with you a point. 
on verse 9 and the previous scriptures, I think it's verses 6 uh, through 8, Revelation 14. You have one angel, you have a second angel, and the third angel begins here in verse 9. Okay? So, it, you know, it trickles down. So you have the first angel, second angel. Now here in verse 9 is the third angel. Let's, let's read what it says. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So now this is talking about the beast, in other words, the Antichrist. You receive his mark in your in your forehead or in the hand. Okay. So these this picture is just representing the first, second, third angels in these scriptures. Moving on to verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. So indignation is very extreme anger or disgust. Continuing, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So it's God's wrath being poured out mixed with his extreme anger. So talking about those who worship the Antichrist, They're going to, they're going to drink the wrath of God. Okay, so in other words, they're going to experience the wrath of God. You know, like they reject God and they worship the Antichrist, or they accept it, and and God's going to look down and say, "Okay, here's my wrath. Pour it out on you. You have to drink that cup." It's you know, spiritually, it's you know, they're not drinking actual cup, but it's being poured out on them. The wrath of God. They're going to suffer the consequences. And they're going to be tormented. Scripture continues to read, And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So this picture is just you know, symbolizing and showing you know, it's, it's a place of torment. There's no, there's no mercy here. Verse 11, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up, it's rising, forever and ever, continually, it's not going to stop, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast? You know, they're not going to get like, oh, to rest an hour, oh no, nope, it's going to continue forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Very clear. Very clear the word right here in the scriptures. It's forever, people. There's no rest. You're going to be tormented continually in this fire, this this. this place of brimstone. Now, to share with you, I was in high school, and there was a dorm teacher there, and showed me a scripture. And I was reading it. I said, what do you think it feels like? You know, the word torment. It was... And what did he, what did he do? He says, let me see your arm. And he started squeezing my arm, and I'm like, whoa, wait, stop, that hurts. And he just, you know, he squeezed, and I'm like, ow! It just felt like, you know, it was beginning to burn, you know, like it was, you know, be squeezed and turned at the same time. And that's somewhat like torture, but that's nothing compared to what the scripture is, is revealing to us of what eternity will be like under the wrath of God. You're making your decision. What do you want? Are you going to worship the Antichrist? Or are you going to worship God? 
And this is this is a decision that's going to be forever and ever. Four, five. No rest, day or night. It's a continual thing. It's just ongoing, never never stopping. Look at here is another picture to give you a somewhat of a of a concept. You know, they're reaching out. They went out of what they're suffering in, and it's never going to stop. There's just going to be millions of people suffering. Someone asked a question. I did not see it. I think maybe they, there's going to be screaming, and Joe's just commenting. I believe, you know, I believe there are going to be, you know, screaming out in torture. I need to study that a little more detail, you know, see what scriptures say. Right now, that's a very good question. I haven't really studied on that, but it, it seems like there would be. So he's going to study further. So now, comparing the wording of the passages quoted above on verse 11, especially with Isaiah 34.10. Let's take a look. It shall not be quenched night or day. It's going to be a continual lake of fire. <laughs> All day, all night. It's ongoing, never ending. The smoke thereof. Talking about the land of Eden. Now, this is in Isaiah. It's an area somewhere south of Israel. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I got to study further in that history of that content of that scripture. You know, it's in regards to Edom, okay, the land of Edom. So the smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste. It's just going to continue, just be there. None shall pass through it forever and ever. You're not going to escape. It's you're, you're there, you're in it. It's, it's not going to be a temporary time where you're able to flee from that. It's an ongoing thing. It will never end. Forever and ever. So here is a map uh, showing Edom. So Israel, Ammon, You've got Edom and Isaiah's time. So I was trying to figure out where it was. You know, I don't know where today is. You gotta take a look at the maps and see what the study bring forth. So I can't say. Now, this says, whoever takes the mark will, will eternally be lost. The smoke of their torment will ascend up forever and ever. They have no rest day or night. And it is far better to take the name of Jesus and let somebody else have the mark of the Antichrist. So let, let's explain this. So I'm going to make a decision. Do I want to worship the Antichrist? If I accept it, I'll go to hell. Suffer and torment forever. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna choose that. I want Jesus Christ. I choose Jesus Christ. It's better to take the name of Jesus. No, I don't I don't want the Antichrist. No, no, no. no. All this this torment's gonna take place. No, I want Jesus forever. I want to be in peace. I want where his love is. I I don't want to be tormented. You make the choice. You let someone else, if they want that mark. That's on them. Not for me. I'm, I'm choosing Jesus. I ain't going that way. I'm, I'm, I'm going up. Here's an image. You have people. They move towards Jesus Christ. And then you have people who choose the wrong choice. And their eternal destination is going into fire and brimstone and burn eternity. If you've got Jesus Christ, you 
bear his name, you're not going down. But here, once you choose the Antichrist, you're going down. It's forever, permanent. And here's another question. What will the mark be? Is the mark the use of your fingerprint to cash a check? What does Revelation 13 and 17 say? Let's take a look. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So in other words, it's saying no one's going to be able to buy or sell unless they've accepted and they've taken the name or they've taken that mark, the name of the beast. It's very clear. It's either or. No mark, no sale. That's what that picture says. I'm going to share with you a story. You remember Moses? God provided food to the two five million Israeli people that was in the wilderness wandering for 40 years. God provided for them. He fed them. He gave them manna. It's, it was like white bread. They had manna and I'm trying to remember something else. Lamb. Quail. You know, it's was, it was a type of bird. So God gave provisions for these people. He didn't, he didn't demand them to, to give him a mark. God just gave to them. He provided for them. And there was no place for them to buy food. They couldn't find food in nature, so God provided for them. You know, for them to rediscover their faith in God. To know that if they're faithful, he will be faithful to them. He's going to provide for their needs. And so, seeing these miracles, let's take a look at Revelation 14, 11. We've already read that, I believe. Let's see. So in chapter 11, there was, in reference to the 144,000 Jews that will be fleeing to the mountains, somewhere, in the mountains somewhere, God will provide for them provisions for three and a half years. They're not going to be required to buy or sell for that. They're not going to take the mark. They're not going to worship the Antichrist. God will provide for them. But the Antichrist will require them to take the name. Anyone that he helps, they're going to have to take the name, the mark. So the 144,000, they're going to be faithful to God. They're not going to take that mark. They're not going to take his name. We've already read this previously, but as commentary, let's briefly comment on this. It's not certain that the number 666, how it's going to be used. So the mark of the beast, is it going to be written on your hand? Uh, I don't know if everyone's going to have that same number. I, I, I don't know. It's not very clear. But I have taught you, you know, there's the barcode. Okay, hold on on that barcode. Let me read Revelation 13, 18. It says, Here is wisdom. Let, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. Referencing to the Antichrist. And his number is 
600, 3 score, and 6. So 3 score is, it means 20, 20, 20, add that together, it's 60. So in written number, it's 666, or in other words, 666. You know, we can't read into the future, we don't know, but we know his number is 666. How are we going to take his mark? You know, is it going to be a 666 number? You know, everybody's going to have the same number. How are they going to, how are they going to read their identity? I don't know. But, you know, there's, so, uh, there's the barcode. And in that barcode, there's a number that repeats. This double, you can look on here, the double red line is a 6. So there could be numbers previous and in the middle and so forth. There's different codes with numbers beginning with certain numbers. It could be clothes, it could be merchandise. It's identifying that when it goes through the barcode reader. But in this number, there's a 666 embedded into this barcode. So the question is, is this how it's going to be taken, you know? All will have a 666 in their mark, but maybe have another number attached within that to identify who they are. I don't know. Yeah, you're right, not all people has seen this or they use this, but they will. You know, they could they could they could access this very easily and implement it for every person to be identified this way. I don't know. Okay, so I want to shift shift my lesson here back on track, and we're going to talk about the Pope here for a moment. Okay, I was trying to find a picture here. This is the closest I could find. It says the carvet, the uh, carvis I'm reading on the on the commentary, not the uh, crown. Crown is hard to read. Anyway, Latin is vicarius filede. That's Latin, and what it means. Um, Okay, let me go back. Uh, in this lesson, it's talking about what the Pope wears. He wears a crown. It's called a papal tiara. And on that tiara, it has the words vicarious filet dei, which is in Latin, and it stands for vicar of the Son of God. Or it means in the place of the Son of God. So, Getting back on the 666, it says, it could more likely that this be the name. Is it, it is more likely this could be the name. It could be something like the United States of Europe. I don't know. It's only a possibility. But we do know this is Latin and this is what it means in the place of God. Continuing a little further, let's look at the word again. Vicaria, vicarious filet day. When you break apart these letters, or numbers, if you will, okay, so you have the letters and the inscription, and it has Roman numeral values. If you break it down, you would have B I C L and D, and their values are 5, 1, and 100, 50, and 500, respectively. So if you understand the Roman numerals, V, what does it stand for? It's 5. Uh, 10 is X. I'm confusing myself. I'm confusing myself. C 
means 100. So you know that. M is what? What's, what does it stand for? I think 1,000 maybe. Anyway, it's not there. M's not on this. So when you calculate these letters, if you put it in that perspective, you have the letter U, which is always inscribed as a V. Okay, it comes down to 666. B is 5, I is 1, C is 100, A and R are zeros, I is 1, U is 5, and S is 0. This is equivalent to 112. Now, moving on to the next word, fly. Fly, I don't know how to say it properly. You have F. Okay, so it's 0, 1, 50, 1, 1. That's a total of 53. Day is 501. You add these all together. So in other words, just breaking these letters apart and putting a numeral, a value, and a number with these letters. Okay? first one was 112, the second was 53, and the last one was 501. Now when you add all these three together, 112 plus 53 plus 501, it equals 666. Woo! We don't know. What is this about the Pope? I don't know. Could it be his name is already there? Is this the Son of God? Could he possibly be the Antichrist? Could it possibly be related to the Antichrist? The Holy Spirit, right? People are, you know, they they worship him. The curious delay day. I don't know. So it's merely an illustration to show a possible meaning of this scripture. Although it appears that it will be the name of the Antichrist and not the false prophet, it's still possible. We don't know. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Okay? In this manner, it's been calculated. Somebody already figured this out. They broke it apart. They calculated it. Who did this? Someone did it. Remember, you know, that we had pictures previously about like a shape of a snake, and it you could see a 666 from the shape of a snake. Somebody figured it out. I don't know. Maybe the person is being creative. And it just somehow forms the 666. They didn't realize it. But it just, you know, moved forward. It was set up. But the Antichrist already has this plan. But the person didn't realize. We don't know. But this has taken place. It's, it's, this wording is already on the Pope's crown, the papal crown, or whatever that word was. It's there today, yes, somebody asked. Papal tiara is what it's called. So here in highlighted, yellow says please do not take the mark i'm telling you don't take the mark don't take the mark of the beast don't accept it don't accept the antichrist don't worship the antichrist i'm telling you don't do it
there will be people who will take the easy way out. It's called the path of least resistance. Why? Let's give you an example. I'm hungry. I'm starving. I can't go anywhere. I can't buy food. Okay, I'll take the mark. Just to give me something to eat. That's an explanation of the path of least resistance. Okay, you know, the word spoiled, you know, they've been given things and their tolerance level. They can't handle being denied. Their, their, their body, they can't deny themselves anything. You know, like for example, taking a city person, going out to the, you know, the country, working a farm, they're like, oh, it's just too hot, I can't do it, I can't, I can't do it, just give me something easy, I want to stay in the house with the AC and just kick back and relax, you know, let the machine take care of it, you know, you've got those little easy vacuums, you know, it's a little flat thing that rolls around on the floor and it vacuums it for you, you know, now today we've got easy access, we order things online, we don't have to drive down to the store and buy it. We are a spoiled generation. We're just very spoiled today. That's what you can call the path of least resistance. And so people are going to be like, oh, I'm starving. I'll take it. I'll take it. There's no resistance. There's no tolerance. You know, it's just easy or nothing. Yeah, there's people today, they'll, they'll call Walmart and they've got their groceries, you know, already to be able to deliver. But God's <coughs> grace, we will not. We will not take that path of least resistance. So when Nebuchadnezzar threatened the three Hebrew children for not bowing down to the image. Here's a, here's a visual. You know, the fourth man is as of the man of God. Okay? The king wanted them to bow down to his image, to, to the image that he, he set forth to worship. And they said no. So the question, the type of Christian that will rise above the new world order, <coughs> what is that going to involve? You know, the comparison today and you have yesterday. Yesterday you had the horse and buggy. You're working out in the field, you know, and you'd be riding the horse and buggy and out in the heat and the, the dirt today, you know. It would be just so hot and so forth. You've got the car. You've got AC. It's nice and comfortable. You can close the windows, keep out exhaust and bugs and so forth. It's a spoiled generation today. The AC, if it breaks down, it's like, oh, i got to get a repair guy to come out and fix it. Oh, you can't come out today. I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to buy a new one. You know, that's today. All right, that was the last of my slide. Chapter 13, we've covered. We finished it. And the whole point of chapter 13, I've you know, summarized everything together. The whole main point of this, this chapter is talking about the Antichrist. It's the first beast. The second beast, the beast is the false prophet. And we expanded on chapter 13, covering both the Antichrist and the false prophet. Now moving on towards chapter 14, it's going to talk about the 144,000. There's more detail that we're going to expand through in these scriptures. And we'll cover that. What time is it right now? You know, it's covering a little bit early. I need your prayer. Just continue praying for me. I've, you know, I've been working on chapter 14, putting things together, and I wanted to finish it. It, it seems to be pretty, you know, even level of understanding. 
you know, we've talked about 143,000. I think it's in chapter seven, possibly. I think, you know, and so that's linked to this chapter. So, you know, referencing back and forth, uh, we'll be able to cover a lot more ground. Let's let's end with prayer tonight. I know we want we want God with us. We want Him to feed us more and so we <coughs> learn more. Someone's asking for prayer for their husband. Pray for John. <coughs> oh, like pray for me. Say say man. Pray for another couple here in our classrooms. Seems like allergies causing a lot of congestion developing, possibly. Let's, let's pray for each other. Let's continue prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We love your word. As we pray for Peggy and her husband, John, the issues with his lungs, the doctor's trying to figure out. We pray for complete healing. Pray for Martha and Vincent. Touch their bodies to heal them from what they're experiencing in their cough. And I pray for myself, you know. You know, Satan doesn't want the word of God to go forth, trying to hinder hinder us from continuing. But we're gonna reach out, we're gonna we're gonna witness, we're gonna get the word of God, we're gonna stay connected, we're gonna be close to the Lord, we're gonna follow the Lord. Doesn't matter what takes place down here, doesn't matter. We're gonna focus on the Lord, let the word of God touch us. We need to reach out to the people that are lost. That their souls are lost and they need salvation. I pray, Lord, that they would receive truth and understanding. I pray for myself as I continue to study your word, that it will be clear to me. Give me the anointing, Lord, that I need. Pray for those out there in Facebook, that they're learning along with us together. We pray for them. We pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen.